our epidemic of SARS-2 or COVID-19 started in March of 2020 locally in southwest Michigan, northern Indiana. And uh, at that time, I got pulled into the fray as the person to start up the convalescent plasma trial. So harvesting people's antibodies that they donated in serum, blood donor serum, and then giving it to people who were acutely ill with SARS-2, COVID-19, trying to treat them and prevent progression. So that was how I got pulled north. So I got to be on the front lines and watch a lot of people get bad SARS, bad COVID. Some people died. Uh, and so watching all that happen, watching the CDC and others try to figure out how to treat this disease. And I'm in my 60s now, for better or for worse. And s sort of reflecting on that, I'm saying to myself, hmm, if I get this, what's going what's gonna to work? And I started thinking, this is crazy. I'm an infectious disease specialist. There's this epidemic going around that I'm vulnerable to, and there's no treatment. There's no reliable treatment. So when it comes to infectious disease, the next thing you say is, well, where's the vaccine? And we all know that we've heard that again over and over. Middle of the summer, I said, we need to find the vaccine. Where is it being produced? Got on the internet, looked up the clinicaltrials.gov, which anybody can look at, and started searching for the vaccine trial sites. One thing I knew is I really didn't want to get vaccinated with a live virus vaccine. So I was looking specifically for a killed virus or something novel or new that didn't involve a live virus. And that's the RNA vaccines that are out now. So uh, Moderna and Pfizer had this vaccine up and running. They had talked about it even as early as spring, that this RNA technology might be able to give us an early vaccine. So I went to clin clintrials.gov, looked for it. Sure enough, there are clinical trials opening up. And uh, it was a real simple decision. You meet with the doctor, he says, well, you know you only have a 50% chance of getting the actual drug, the vaccine, because the comparator in the trial is a placebo. It's just saline, uh, sterile water they're injecting you with. And part of that is they want the trial, what we call blinded, so that there's no bias. You can't say, oh, I got it, I must have this response, or I didn't get it, I have that response. So they actually go through that and say, you realize you may not actually get the vaccine. And we had that frank discussion and I said, yeah, but I'll take my 50-50% chance that I'll get it or don't get it and this will get the trial moving. After all that talk and a blood draw and a quick check, then they actually inject you and they inject you and it is the slickest, fastest, least in obnoxious shot I've ever had. I actually went in hoping I'd get the vaccine and because um, that was my only option for protection. And the nurse who gave it to me, I literally didn't feel it. And I've given plenty of shots myself and had plenty of shots from other people. And I actually walked out of the injection room and said, doggone it, I didn't get vaccinated because it hurt so little. My first hint that I actually got the vaccine is we're driving home from Columbus that afternoon, and I'm going, man, my arm hurts. It really is kind of achy. Feels like I got a flu shot. Oh, yeah, I did get a shot, you know. And that lasted about a day, and then I went back to work, and no bother. And then we got boosted again in Columbus, Ohio, three weeks later. I say we because my wife and I both did this. And uh, oh, three weeks later, I got the same thing, and I had the same reaction. Since then, I haven't had any troubles. I still take precautions, even though I'm vaccinated, immunized, if you will. By the data, I'm technically protected, but we still don't know, even though it doesn't, it protects me from getting infection and protects me from getting sick from the infection, we don't know if it protects me from being a spreader. Can I carry it still and, and spread it in that context? So we still do this stuff. So I did a lot of clinical trial work. Safety is really a big issue for the FDA and for conscientious pharmaceutical companies. Pfizer 
is got a great reputation for conscientious, scientifically meritable research. They don't cut corners. You have to remember, f pharmaceuticals that cut corners lose tons of money. You can't beat reality. You know, you have to be honest with yourself and with what you're finding. If you ignore reality, then sooner or later it'll come back and bite you. And the drug you spent all this money developing won't be any good. And you are just kidding yourself. So Pfizer clearly, you know, at least my experience is following that pattern. That's what they've stated their goal is. When you actually look at the content of the written protocol, the written experiment that they're doing, if you will, it's very sound science. There's no holes in it. So just because it was fast doesn't mean it wasn't uh, done rightly. And that's what they've. That's why it's so amazing that it's done is that they did it this quickly and they still held the same level of quality that they have on any other that they took their time at. If you're a healthcare worker, you should strongly consider getting it. Um, just because you're at risk. I mean, and there, there is the real, the very real tragedies around us of the 33 year old who died and was perfectly healthy. All of us know at least distantly somebody who died of this thing. That's not pretty. Um, and so we just keep moving on. If you wait, you're, you're taking your chances. Okay. So if, if you're concerned for your own safety and protection, whatever your risk group is, and you wait, then you need it to be taking other precautions, which is wearing this stuff still, laying low as far as social interactions go and risk groups, um, continuing social distancing. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just because we're waiting for a vaccine and you've decided to wait personally to see how it pans out doesn't mean it hasn't gone away. The threat is still there and it's a very real threat. The side effects of the first and second dose by and large are so little, they're almost at the level of placebo. You know, that you'd get the same thing if you got a saline shot or whatever. There's a few exceptions to that, but you know, it's, I would say you should commit to it and just get it done. The, the flu shots, less effective in my opinion than the COVID vaccine and it gives you the same side effects. You know, you f it revs up your immune system and with that you get that kind of fluey feeling for a day or so and then it's pretty much over. Um, that's significantly less than getting COVID if you happen to be that one to two percent that get awful sick with COVID. Um, so to me it's worth the hazard. It's certainly worth the hazard um, if you're in the 45 year old and older group, those are the people that we've seen sort of inordinate numbers of deaths and severe results from the COVID. Um, so that group for sure should be getting the vaccine. And in a clinical trial, it's a crapshoot. You're throwing the dice and you got a 50% chance of getting the vaccine. Now you got a 100% chance of getting the vaccine. You should act, you shouldn't wait. This thing isn't going to get nicer. It's not going to get less vicious. We aren't going to find a magical cure. This is the only action you can take other than just holding up and social distancing the rest of the next two years, which very few of us want to do. So now's the time. I mean, this is your only chance to actually prevent getting sick from this disease.